Hey everyone, really nice to see you all. Thank you so much for making it here on a rainy day. So uh, I'm Gagan Mack. I lead our Web3 Services uh, product pillar. Let's start by thinking about why we built Web3 Services. We heard a little bit from Nick Hill about the complexity that developers encounter, the, the pain points that users have in accessing crypto and in accessing, this, accessing USDC, all the goodness of USDC. What are some of these pain points? So even in 2023, a billion has been lost to theft. The gas experience that Nikhil talked about of having ETH in the wallet to be able to make a transaction is alien to 99% of the population in the world. That is something we have to abstract away. In this particular example, the value of ETH is less than the amount of gas it would need to actually take it out of the wallet. It doesn't make any sense. And even today, there's a company that is selling plates to protect your seed phrases for recoverability, metal plates. This is insane. You cannot walk around with metal plates to protect your keys. That's why we built Web3 services. And we started with wallets, because wallets are the access points to get access to the US dollar. That's where everything starts. So we launched programmable wallets in the June of 2023. That's three months ago. And our first pilot customer was, is Grab. So what you're seeing on the screen is a real screenshot from the flows that Grab has enabled in their wallets in Singapore. So during F1, which recently uh, finished, there were some coupons issued to users. These are NFTs. And these wallets are user controlled. So these are user controlled NPC wallets. So users have control over when they sign the transaction. There is no pass phrases, there's no pass keys. It is a web to UX. So users use email ID and password and a pin code. Really straightforward to use. They're blockchain agnostic. So this wallet, uh, this wallet is deployed on Polygon, and this experience is running on Polygon. But if Grab wanted to try another blockchain, they could do it in minutes. It's a parameter in an API. Really straightforward. Out of the box, enterprises get full operational support. What that means is if there is an error on a transaction or if your users are calling you with customer support because of a delay, you know exactly how to respond to them. So the tools out of the box enable enterprise-grade support. The infrastructure scales elastically. As the volume ramps up, that's when, without adding any more latency, without adding any more issues, the infrastructure will automatically scale up, just what you would expect from an AWS or a Google Cloud. This is an enterprise-grade infrastructure. And the coolest part, which we're talking about, which we're really excited to share, is like the gasless experience. So in this entire flow, there is no concept of gas. There is no Matic being used by the user or being seen by the user, because Grab is paying on their behalf, because these wallets are smart contract wallets, and that's what smart contract wallets with 4337 enable. So we're really excited to provide two new updates with, uh, with Jeremy talked about, the gas station and smart contract platform. And we are introducing them today. Smart contract platform is already live, and gas station is something which Grab is already using. So we have piloted it with them, and we are bringing it to the rest of the developer community. So the two new updates, gas station, smart contract platform. So let's see how they work, starting with gas station. So this is, again, the screenshot from the Grab app, which was looping on the previous slide. Here, there's a detail where you see that the blockchain fee is paid by Grab. They are paying on behalf of the users. And the, behind the scenes, I'll describe what they're doing. So behind the scenes, you go into the Circle developer console, free to sign up, self-service, email ID and password, and you're in. And here, you create a policy for your Paymaster. Paymaster is the contract that is paying gas on behalf of the Grab users. And every developer, every enterprise can spin up their own. When you create a policy for the Paymaster, you're going to, so usually what happens, like first you need to source gas. Over here, you're first setting a policy to say that how much is the max and min spend you want to allow on the wallet, and what is the total amount of spend you want to do per day. So you're completely customizing the gas experience that the developers have. And then when you have to source tokens, usually you would have to, if you're a developer, you're building on Ethereum testnet, you would go find Gourley tokens. Recently when the merge happened after that, there was a shortage of Gourley tokens, so a lot of developers could not test their apps, it got stuck. 
most of the faucets, faucets being sources of these tokens which you need to develop an app to test transactions, they have limits on how much you can get at, a, at one time. So it's a pain to keep going and keep getting tokens. Now we are eliminating that. How are we doing that? So you just enter your credit card info, like you do on AWS, like you do on Twilio, Stripe, Google Cloud, anywhere. And once you, uh, once you have your credit card info, you can either buy credits in fiat or just use pay as you go. So you have set up your policy to, for the paymaster max min spends. You have set up your credit card, and that's all you need. You activate your gas station, and now all the gas station will start uh, sponsoring the transactions on behalf of all the wallets that are associated with it. And you will see a full log of how much each wallet is using. So you can customize the full policies. So within a span of minutes, you have completely eliminated the gas experience for users, and you have made developer experience 10x easier to build on blockchain. So that's why gas station is, we believe gas station is going to be really important for the Web2 users and the enterprises who want to actually develop crypto apps. All right, so now that you can deliver a gasless experience, no network fees for users, you can hide the network fees from users, um, using programmable wallets and gas station, what's next, right? So next is a smart contract platform, because wallets and gas is only the starting point. Wallets bring access to the digital tokens. But then what do you do with them? How do you embed logic in an application? How do you embed use cases, blockchain-powered use cases in an application? That is what the smart contract platform will unlock. Let's take a look at how. So today, when you, when you try to work with a smart contract, you have to figure out what the contract address is. You have to figure out what function calls it enables. You have to figure out how to embed it in your app. We are going to change the way developers do that. And here's, I'll explain this through an example. So the example over here is a, fict fict a fictional company, Koala, Koala Clothing. It's an example company. Now, there are millions of e-commerce companies, uh, small e-commerce shops um, on the web. And they all compete for customer loyalty. Many of these companies serve customers internationally. And when they serve customers internationally, we heard about a use case of a digital currency hedge, people around the world wanting to hold and use do digital dollars. Um, and when they want to grow loyalty, they can do that by retaining value on the app. Now, as a business, how would you do that? So imagine if this business, within a few lines of code, could convert this app into a, uh, to also have this, uh, to, to embed a savings account in this app that auto-generates yields by rounding up every purchase to a dollar of course with user's permission. So if they were to hypothetically enable such a use case, which is common across many applications, how would they do it? They would first need to find the wallets. They would need to figure out like, how to embed a wallet in the app, make the experience frictionless. That's what is solved with programmable wallets. And that itself would be a non-trivial uh, endeavor. But now there are, with a wallet as a service company, you could argue you can go and get that. Then you would need to, this is where the problem begins of embedding logic. You need to find the right contract. You need to know which contract is secure, which contract is OK to use. It'll work all the time. You need to figure out how to deploy the contract. To deploy the contract, you need a wallet. You need to understand these concepts. As a developer, you need to figure out how to integrate with contract functions. These contract functions are written in the language Solidity. And there are only 200,000 developers as of today, approximately, who write Solidity code. But guess what? There are 100 million people who can code in other languages around the world. So how do we enable the contract functionality to be used by these 100 million developers? And that is what um, the smart contract platform enables. So you, you import a contract, and soon we'll launch audited, pre-audited templates. Uh, as of today, this product is live today. So you can go and import a contract. Um, here I'm, is in the example, I'm importing a Uniswap contract. And then uh, the platform spins up an MPC wallet out of the box for you to be able to deploy that contract, deploy an instance of the contract. And the platform generates REST APIs. So what you see over here, the code, this is the code that most of the developers around the world are familiar with. It's REST APIs, um, generated Node.js SDK, generated Python SDK. So you can just pick up, you can use the smart contracts in any of these languages that you're familiar with. And that makes contract functions accessible to developers around the world. So you get secure wallets, audited, pre audited contract templates where we have security tested the contracts are coming soon. Um, today, you can easily embed contracts into your app using the languages that you already know. 
And finally, you can offer a gasless experience to users, both across contracts and across wallets. So this starts looking like a complete platform where you can come in, build wallets, um, embed code, embed logic into your application, and serve the power of blockchain-enabled concepts, the, the open financial infrastructure, the composable protocols that uh, Nikhil and Jeremy talked about. You can bring that to the users. So now going back to our Koala Inc., right? So um, what does Koala Inc., what is Koala Inc. able to do by embedding the contract functionality? So with the Uniswap, swap con Uniswap V3 swap contract, this is the experience that Koala can enable. Um, every purchase is rounded up. ETH is bought programmatically from that purchase. You could even buy, buy USDC or any contract. The reason I'm using ETH here is to illustrate that you can use any ERC20 token uh, with these wallets. So you can buy ETH, and uh, the gas is, again, abstracted away from the user, and that ETH is staked using the staking call from the contract, and the user, as they make purchases, they keep earning returns on that. And to do this, a developer would need to spend maybe a day. This is how simple it is. What are the other use cases where a smart contract platform can help? Automatic invoicing and payments. We already looked at yield. Issuing NFTs within games. So you're building a game, a mobile game or a game in Unity, and you want to generate an NFT when a user crosses a level. You could call a ERC721 deployment, or which is a, um, the contract for, um, contract for NFTs. You could, you could invoke the mint function from that contract whenever you want in your app, and it would just generate an NFT. Uh, digital replicas of products, just like how Nike created CryptoKicks. Uh, tokenized loyalty points like Starbucks. These kinds of use cases are all now very accessible to all the enterprises. And there's a lot more that the contracts, uh, uh, the embedded smart contracts can do. So we're really excited to bring these um, to the enterprises today. So with these three capabilities, Circle Web3 Services enables developers to embed wallets, contract APIs, and offer a completely gasless experience to users. The platform is enterprise grade, secure, scales elastically, and is pay as you go. This is what we envision will unlock the ability for developers around the world to bring crypto powered use cases into their applic existing applications. We are building for everyday users. We are not building for very, very specific niche, niche speculative cases. We are building so that this technology, just like how Nikhil mentioned, the shift happened from telecom to VoIP. Similarly, we want to transition. We want to make this transition happen from the existing financial infrastructure to the new open internet of finance. And the constructs that you are seeing on the screen are the ones that enable that, starting with wide accessibility to USDC and Eurocoin. On top of that, CCTP, which is the cross-chain transfer protocol to make sure that USDC can move around all the chains regardless of where your app is, and then Web3 services that enable you to get to utilize the underlying stack rapidly and easily. And that's Web3 services. Uh, so thank you so much.